Trademarks are valuable marketing tools. At their most powerful, they can immediately trigger brand associations without the brand name ever being mentioned. Think a golden M, a silver apple, or a black tick. But only registered trademarks will be protected by intellectual property law and the remedies it provides. So, registering trademarks is essential for businesses hoping to be successful. This is Fergus, a hopeful business owner. Yesterday, he decided that he wanted to use this sign as a trademark for his business, Fergus's Fresh Figs. He has made an application to the Register of Trademarks. Going through Section 41, Subsection 3 of the Trademarks Act will tell us whether Fergus's application will be successful. An application will be rejected if the trademark is not capable of distinguishing the applicant's goods or services from the goods or services from other persons. In Ocean Spray Cranberries and Register of Trademarks, the registrar had deemed the trademark Cranberry Classic as not capable. It was a phrase which appeared on bottles containing cranberry fruit juice. Ocean Spray was appealing against the rejected application. If these two conditions set out in Section 41, Subsection 3 apply to a trademark, it is deemed not capable. That is, a trademark is not inherently adapted to distinguish the goods or services, and it has not gained factual distinctiveness. In Ocean Spray, Judge Wilcox referred to the test for determining whether a trademark is inherently adapted from the case Clark Equipment and Register of Trademarks. It involves considering whether other persons in the same trade would think to use the same trademark. In light of Note 1 in Section 41 of the Trademark Act, it was considered significant that Cranberry Classic appeared on the label in the same block letters and with the same degree of prominence as the words which identified other flavours in the range like Cranberry Blackberry and Pink Grapefruit. The fact that the phrase Cranberry Classic appeared to be interchangeable with the phrases that identified the other flavours led to led Judge Wilcox to determine that it was only being used in a way to describe the contents of the bottle to which it was affixed. Where the word cranberry denoted the kind of fruit juice, the word classic was intended to convey the notion of excellence. It followed that cranberry classic could mean no more than quality cranberry, which is a phrase that other cranberry drink traders might wish to use. For Fergus, we can reach the same conclusion. It is reasonable that other fig traders might wish to market their quality of figs as fresh. Now our attention turns to factual distinctiveness. If a sign has been used as a trademark prior to submitting the application, this may save the fact that it is not inherently adapted to distinguish, so the trademark can indeed be registered. In Ocean Spray, Judge Wilcox referred to that question that was asked in the case of British Sugar and James Robertson and Sons. Has the mark acquired a sufficiently distinctive character that the mark has really become a trademark? Ocean Spray submitted extensive evidence of the prior use of the Cranberry Classic sign, including the fact that by the date of the application, sales of that product were generating millions per year. Despite this, Judge Wilcox agreed with the Register of Trademarks that Cranberry Classic has not been used as a trademark. The main factor guiding his decision was the fact that Cranberry Classic had always been used alongside the already registered trademark Ocean Spray. His Honour said that given the invariable presence on the label of the Ocean Spray trademark, any association in the public mind between the product and the company would have been derived from the use of the words Ocean Spray in advertising, not from the use of the words Cranberry Classic. This is bad news for Fergus. We have already argued by analogy to the Ocean Spray case and decided that his sign is not inherently adapted to distinguish his goods. And because he only conjured up the fresh figs sign yesterday, he has no case to support the trademark as factually distinctive. This means that section 41 subsection 3 applies to his sign, so his trademark is not capable of distinguishing his goods from the goods of others. His application must be rejected. Sorry Fergus, you'll have to fig her out a different trademark.